Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where I've made a small tweak for purposes of re-entry on our wing positions here. But otherwise, I think this is ready to go. We had a very successful simulation launch of our shuttle last episode, and I'm rather content with this as of right now. I think it's good. So let's bring this on up to the Mir station for our real actual flight. We're not gonna be bringing Valentina. We're just going to be bringing Jeb Bill Bob, and I think that'll be okay for now. So let's put this out on the pad and we're going to launch this right on up. I don't really think that when we launch it matters because we're going to be going into an equatorial orbit here and that's going to be a little bit on the spicy side because we're going to need to do a big ol' inclination change. But it should be fine, right? It should be fine. So we're going to throttle this on up. We're going to go to surface up for right now. And off we go on our first real shuttle launch. We're uh, at a bit of a jaunty angle. I'm sure it's fine. So off we go. And yeah, it, it just corrects itself. So that is exactly the goal here. Off we go. And we're gonna be going basically straight up here, but I do want to get ourselves a little bit of horizontal speed here. So I'm just bringing this on over to be about, it's not sitting exactly where I want it to be, but that's because we're, we're on up. Yeah, that would help. Okay. We'll just park it here for right now. 93 degree heading is probably fine, but I'll just try to correct that. Okay, 90 degree heading. Looks good for the moment. So let's get ourselves some altitude here. The SRBs are definitely a little bit spicy and the detachment of them is an issue as well. I would like, I think, to detach the SRBs at a slightly different time. Right, and we have some staging issues here that I never actually fixed. Let's do that and let's do that. Okay, there we go. So we're just riding the SRBs on up here. We can see our apoapsis height is about 37 right now. So I'm just going to bring this on over. This thing is so, so controllable. It's actually remarkable how controllable this thing is. So we're just going to get some horizontal speed at this point. We can see time to apoapsis is currently coming down. SRBs are off. Okay. I'm keeping an eye on that time to apoapsis. It's kind of holding firm. Eh, not really holding firm right now, but it's going to start going up here, I think. With a lot of horizontal speed, I'm still afraid that if we ditch the SRBs here, that they're going to clip our wings. And I would really rather not do that. We can see time to apoapsis is now holding firm and starting to go up. So that looks good. Yep, that definitely looks good. Let's just go to horizontal velocity up right now. That'll be fine. And we're just going to continue to get ourselves horizontal speed here. This looks absolutely fine. With the exception that we don't have a good way to detach these Clydesdales. That's a problem we'll need to solve eventually. But for now, I think it's okay. So 60 kilometer apoapsis is looking solid. We can see time to apoapsis is definitely starting to come up here and it's starting to come up quite a lot. I'm just adjusting our roll ever so slightly here. And we're about to hit 70 kilometers on our apoapsis right about now. There we go. I'm gonna push this up to about 100. We don't need to go too much higher than that for right now. So that'll be okay. 80. And we're still pushing our way right on through here. 90 and 100. Engine cut off. And let's detach these now that we've reached engine cut off. Actually, let's just continue to carry them until we hit space. It doesn't really matter one way or another. So that'll be fine. 68. 69. And 70 kilometers. So that's space. Now we'll detach them. Okay. So 
Attempting to get some thrust there pushes us up a little bit because of the angle of the engines, but that does eventually clear. Okay, so that's noted. We're definitely going to hop over here and circularize. We need to get a little bit more horizontal speed to bring this on into a proper orbit. 300 meters per second, that's fine. We've got a kilometer per second in our orange tank still. And then another 2.5 in our actual shuttle here. So that'll be absolutely fine. Let's align to this node. It's a rather slow turning process, but that's okay. We have no deployable solar panel on here and that is fully understood. Our electric charge can be recharged with the alternator on our vector engines, and it can be recharged at our destination. And we have a lot of electric charge. So that's the overall idea here. This is supposed to be removed. Okay, let's get rid of that. Phenomenal. So we've got about one minute at this point, a little over a minute until our burn timer. 50 seconds, 40, 30, 20, 10, 3, 2, 1, 0, mark. And off we go. So we can see that this is going to change a fair amount because of the angling of the engines. And that's understood. Okay, we'll call that good for now. Yeah, that puts us in orbit there, and we'll just head around to prograde. That's a little bit awkward, no doubt about it. We'll see how that ends up going. We might just have to not go for nodes. We'll see. <laughs> that'll, that'll definitely be interesting. So the mirror core module is here. And of course, we're going to have to change our inclination quite a lot. 51.8 degrees. So we'll go ahead and work on that other direction. Okay, we'll have to toss in some retrograde. And this makes it kind of awkward for us, right? At this point, we wish that our vectors were flat and they're simply not. But we're just going to bring this right on in here. That's the wrong directionality. Okay, <laughs> it would help if I'm doing this correctly. Actually, that's kind of close-ish to an encounter. Can we bring that around and dial it in like this? That's close enough. It is definitely pretty close. Yeah, we can get to around nine kilometers and work from there. That seems okay. It's going to be a little awkward with our offset angle here. One thing I'm wondering, could we reassemble this in orbit with our engineer and flatten it out? It's a potential option. I don't know that it's a good option. And this burn is too soon to do it. So let's try with this burn. It's going to be interesting because of our angled vectors here. Once we're in space, we don't need this angled. We just need it angled like this for takeoff. And of course, the system doesn't really compensate for it. I wonder if we had something here that we could control from. That would be an interesting way to counteract this situation, actually. That might be a viable option. We'll experiment with that after this burn. So we've got 30 seconds, 20, 10, and we should be burning about now. So this is going to be quite a lot of Delta V. No doubt about that. We're going to be ditching our big orange tank here as soon as we are out of burn with it, which is going to be here in about 10 seconds. And yes, our periapsis is definitely down quite a lot right now. I don't expect it to remain that way in our final orbit here. Yeah, our final orbit will be okay. So the big orange tank is gone at this point. Ooh, okay. That's noted. <laughs> That's absolutely noted. Okay, we didn't actually lose any parts from our shuttle here. So the shuttle is fine. Unfortunately for us, we're going to have to go to Kilrot here, and we definitely need to adjust this at this point. 
No doubt about that. Yeah, no doubt about it. So we're going to have our engineer EVA here. I do think that having a control point down here might solve the overall problem. But for the time being, let's just see about reassembling this thing in a quote-unquote proper manner. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to utilize the engine plate here. We'll see if we're able to do this. Okay. Maybe with Kerbal's assisting. So we'll have Jeb EVA as well, and we'll see about doing some maintenance here. So we'll have Jeb come on over. Over you come, Jeb. Okay. So with Kerbal's assisting, how are we doing? Not you. Nope, we can't grab the vectors. Okay, so in that case, we'll do a fallback here. So the fallback is going to be, A, Jeb is going to hop back in. Clearly, this is something that we did not properly test, but that's okay. So we have a fallback plan. That fallback plan is basically as follows. Jeb gets back in. Bill is going to hop over to the cargo bay. Because clearly without the big orange tank as offset mass, this is a bit problematic. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to hop in here and we're going to grab this here. So I want to grab this guy. We'll attach it out over here for now, but we're going to move it this direction. No welding animation, please, Bill. We've got enough going on here. Okay. So for now, I'm going to place it over here. And then we're going to need to attach it over this direction. Because we can control from this, right? So if we attach it like this, it's going to be facing inverted. If we attach it like this, it might get destroyed by the vector exhaust. So we may not actually want to attach it here. Okay. We may actually want to attach it somewhere like here. There we go. So with that attached, let's close our service bay again. And let's have Bill hop in for the moment. And let's see what we can do with this. Okay, so we board this. And if we control from here, it's going to be kind of weird. But there we go. Okay, so the question now is, and yes, we're currently here. We're going to need to head around to our descending node here. Oh, our periapsis is really, really low. Right. That's going to be a problem. Let's bring this around over here and we can just prograde burn it until our periapsis is up high enough. Actually, we should be prograde burning right now. Okay. Let's prograde burn here and see what this does. Do we lose control? We do. Okay. So we need a proper solution to this then. Okay. So in that case, I guess we're coming back in and this is actually a launch failure then because this solution does not work once we get to this stage of flight. We're unable to hold attitude here. So to that end, we'll just have to sit at surface velocity up. We are going to control from here then. So that just does not end up functioning at this juncture. We're just going to have to bring this in. And I would actually like to be at horizontal velocity up right now. Not surface velocity up. Okay. So in we come. And this is going to be very interesting indeed. We'll just attempt to hold the attitude here. We have less fuel than we did before. But right now, basically, all we're trying to do is sustain flight for as long as possible. That is the overall goal at this moment. The real question is, though, how are we going to solve the solution, or how are we going to get a solution for this issue? We need to be able to turn these, if we can't do it in orbit, 
And if they don't gimbal enough, that's going to be awkward. No doubt about that. So we're coming on in here. Our periapsis is still about 20 kilometers, so this should be reasonably fine-ish. We're currently a little bit above prograde here. We do see some heating issues up this direction. That said, we are slowing down, so it should be reasonably fine. Reasonably fine. I guess we'll see how our flight characteristics end up going here. So that's good to know. We are well below orbital velocity at this point. Looks like we're going to be coming in over... Well, there, there is additional land over here. We might be over the land. We'll see. Okay. So we've almost got this solved. But it's not solved once we get to orbit. We could do like before and carry a second set of engines specifically for orbit. That's definitely a not real way to do it, but it is an option. And maybe it's a non-terrible option. We are slowing down, but not slowing down all that speedily. That's fine. The more air between us and the ground, the better right now. So we're just trying to glide at this moment and trying to see how exactly our aerodynamics hold. Moving the wings forward seems to have helped dramatically on that front so far, but we didn't come in at a steep angle of attack for aerodynamic slowdown either. So we'll see. We're down to 1,600 meters per second. Definitely some heating effects here, but... I mean, this is a pretty shallow re-entry. We were not intending to re-enter at all. We definitely could think about, like, just using these three as... Oh, hang on a moment. Okay, that's exciting. We lost attitude there, and the wings burned off when we lost attitude. So, that is good to know. That is definitely good to know. I didn't expect to lose attitude like that, to be honest. That was a strange way to lose attitude, in my opinion, but it's okay. We'll get our chutes out, and the chutes will pull us around the correct direction. Without our wings, we're not really going to be able to uh, vector upward here. We're not going to have a lot of lift. So we'll see how this ends up going. Okay. Okay. Downward we go. I did change these to deploy at five kilometers instead of deploying at, at two kilometers. So that's okay. We're going to be pulled around here. We'll toggle our gear action group. Not like that's going to, you know, help all that much. But we'll still toggle it. Okay. We are coming in relatively horizontally here. And splash. <laughs> I am surprised that this thing is consistently withstanding these, like, 100 meter per second splashdowns. That's remarkable to me. Okay. We'll recover it. So, there's definitely an attitude issue as we come in. I think that that attitude issue is a relatively solvable one by angle of attack. Like, I think our problem there was we, we came in a little, I, I want to say more steeply than we should have. We were relatively low in the atmosphere and moving quite quickly still. So I think that was the core issue there. As far as the attitude issue after getting rid of the big orange tank, that's a significant design issue. And the question is, how do we want to handle it? So, one thing that we could consider doing is putting an actually straight engine here and ditching these engines after we achieve orbit. This is not something that happened historically. This would be just for KSP purposes. So, that would end up meaning, and we're going to end up losing our angle on these, which is awkward, but that would end up meaning removing that 
and putting on some form of a vacuum optimized engine. So something along the lines of, yeah, not a boar. Something along the lines of a uh, corgi. But that's, you know, huge. So maybe even a, a relatively small engine, like a terrier. It's very small, no doubt about that. And then that would end up being our orbital engine. And then we would use this engine, which again, that straightens out. So we would need to re-angle this. So that would be somewhere around here-ish is where it was. And then we would need to move the entire vehicle up a, a, a little bit here so that we're not impacting the ground. And then we would need to move down our SRBs, which is actually not a bad thing for us to do. We're actually pretty okay with moving the SRBs down on this stack. That means they'll be a little bit easier to clear. And we should probably strut this as well. So let's grab quad symmetry struts here. I guess we can only do two symmetry there. No mirror symmetry. No mirror symmetry, please. Okay. Quad symmetry. That went... Oh, that's really awkward. I guess we'll have to do this on single symmetry. The game is confused about this build. Fair enough. I'm confused about it too. So we'll do something like this, something like this, and something like this. Okay, so that's intended to hold that more in position there. So this engine plate, when it decouples, that shroud goes away, right? That would be the idea anyway. We do need to continue to move these guys down a bit. So this, of course, needs to be in bicoupled symmetry. And we'll place that right there for now. It's going to have to come up more than that, though. So let's just grab this and move it on up a little bit. That's all the further it goes. Okay. So let's grab this guy and try to place it approximately where it needs to go. About here. Okay. So this would solve our attitude issue once we enter space. Recovery is still potentially an issue here. But let's try this again. I'm sure our test pilots are uh, feeling very confident in this design, right? I'm gonna put this out on the pad and we're going to revert this back to launch. The main thing that I want to test here, and we should redo staging as well. So the main thing that I wanna test here is simply that getting rid of our engine plate properly can activate the, the terrier. That's the main idea here. So we're going to put this out there and we're going to get that going. The actual launch sequence of this is good at this point. I'm, I'm relatively content with that. But we decouple this. Nothing happens. Okay. So we're going to have to revert that back. We knew that we probably would have to. We're going to have to toss a decoupler in there. So that's okay. I'm going to once again detach this. We're going to toss in a decoupler here. I'm going to go with a TD-25. And then we're going to put this guy back in here. We'll have to redo the rotation again. Okay. And we'll rotate this to be approximately right here, I think. Okay, let's redo the staging. So this would be those two, yes. And then this decoupler is grouped together with that decoupler and this decoupler. Okay, these need to be in very separate stages. So this internal decoupler goes up here. This guy would happen when this decouple happens. Yeah, something along the lines of this would be correct as far as staging goes. Okay, let's try this again. I don't like this solution for the engines. It's a very Kerbal solution. Are we over tilted though? That's the question we need to ask here and we'll find out if we're over tilted, this will be a simulation. For timing purposes though, it's really late in the episode already. So for time purposes, if this is not over tilted, then we'll graduate it into a real one. But it might end up being over tilted here. We'll see. So 
off we go. We're going to go to Kill Rot. Oh, this doesn't have fuel. Okay. That's definitely going to be reverted. Yes, that wouldn't have fuel. We need to run the fuel directly into it then. Because the fuel is going into these tanks right now. So we need to go back to vehicle assembly here. I am dumb. The fuel is not flowing through this decoupler right now. So we're going to enable crossfeed there. And then the question is, do we have fuel here right now? Or do we just need to move this fuel directly in like so? And I think that's what we'll do. And we'll disable this crossfeed. We'll just move in the fuel like that. So that'll be the idea there. Let's try this again. Now the question remains, how's our angle? Our angle may or may not be good. And I have a feeling this might be a bit of a long episode at this point. Yeah, maybe. I don't know if we're going to go all the way to the mirror station at this point. I think probably what we're going to end up doing is at least achieving orbit here. And then maybe docking up next episode. It's been a whole thing to develop the shuttle. No doubt about that. Okay, we've definitely got fuel now. And that's looking good as far as our attitude goes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot more forgiving now that we've got these vectors, of course. So let's just position ourselves here for right now. And we, I really think that we should stage this when we've got about three seconds left here so that these can separate out on their own. That would be the ideal scenario. And they just take off and fly off with about three seconds of thrust remaining. So that way we're not carrying this. That said, we're going to have a lot more fuel efficiency with this carrier. So there's definitely that. Let's just punch up through the atmosphere for right now. We've got about 40 seconds on these SRBs. And we're going to go eventually to horizontal velocity up. But for right now, this seems reasonably fine. So 25 seconds left. Our altitude is definitely cr climbing. Let's take this over to the horizon at this point. So horizontal velocity up. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Well, that's awkward. Okay. Okay. So that is definitely very, very awkward. We are going to enable crossfeed here. And we'll continue to push ourselves up for now. We're going to have some really strange situations here. There's no doubt about that. We're going to need to go to prograde. And there's a lot of wiggling going on here. That's for sure. <laughs> so that detachment is still a problem. That's clear. For now, we can probably recover this. We are burning this fuel, though, and so we're going to need to just manually move this fuel. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to manually move this fuel on over. Okay, that's getting really awkward. I'm going to open up all of these. There we go. And we're going to just do some of this. Okay. There we go. Now we're moving some fuel over anyway. This is really, really, really awkward. No doubt about it. But let's just move this fuel on over for the time being. And we'll continue to push our way upwards here. So 67, 68, 69, 70. That's all looking reasonable. <laughs> this is... This is very awkward. No doubt about that. We're going to turn it off for the moment and work our way back. 82. So we're actually relatively good here at this juncture. We're continuing to move this fuel over. And that's fine for now. Okay. Let's continue to push our way through here. Wonderful. So we're going to be burnt out of this tank very shortly. Okay, we have plenty of apoapsis height at this juncture. 
So we'll call that good for now and continue to move all of this fuel over. So our current goal is to move all of this fuel out. This is recoverable, but it's very awkward. Very, very awkward indeed. So next up is going to be this tank. We've got plenty of fuel for this, and we can get rid of this as well for the moment. We've got lots of time here. <laughs> this did not necessarily go according to plan, but that's okay. We're going to continue to, that fuel has been moved out, okay? We're going to move this fuel on out. I do want to stage here. So that means that we're going to be on this tiny little terrier at this point. Wonderful. And we're just going to continue to move this fuel on in to store it on our internal storage. And then we'll achieve orbit here and we'll call this good for now. We'll try some additional angles of attack for re-entry, but we definitely need to get this mission finished up here. We can continue to work on the space shuttle. It'll definitely be necessary. The major pain points right now, in my opinion, the major pain points, pain points right now are as follows. Detachment of the SRBs. Now that we can, I think, just delay a little bit. We've got plenty of fuel. I was trying to be a little greedy here, so that's reasonably okay. I'm not too concerned about that. The other pain point is re-entry. That, I think, is more a problem of technique than design, is the current going theory. So we'll just circularize this about here, 188 meters per second. That seems reasonably fine. We're going to be ditching our vectors, of course, because we have that offset thrust issue. So that is relatively necessary. Let's just position for this burn. It's going to be a relatively long one. We've got very low power on, these, on, on this carrier, which is expected. I suppose the other thing we could potentially do here is just thrust limit these. That might not be a bad idea, now that I think about it. We could definitely consider that. Okay, we've got about a minute until this burn. So let's tick on forward here, and we're supposed to have started the burn by now. So let's warp on... Whoa, okay. Apparently we can't hold attitude like this. That's interesting. We could if we ditched this fuel. There's only 2017 meters per second in it, so or actually not even. Let's let's just go ahead and fill this up and let's ditch this. Okay. Now we should be able to easily hold attitude. Although this is kind of awkwardly positioning itself in front of us. Okay. We're going to have to head out this direction a little bit and then make our way back over to the node. Just to dodge our tank. <laughs> there we go. Well, this has been mildly awkward, but it is relatively functional. Relatively. Let's bring this around. I do think potentially just thrust limiting this would maybe be our best bet now that I think about it, rather than having this sort of a situation. So I think that's probably how we're going to handle the shuttle in the future, is we'll thrust limit it back here. And we'll just wait to detach the SRBs until in space, like before. We don't have any major issues with Delta V in this, although this is a lot more efficient on the Delta V to have the Terrier here. There's no doubt about that. We're getting a, roughly double the Delta V out of this at that point. So it might be worthwhile to continue to have it like this, but I don't know. I'll think about it. It is past time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Next episode, we're going to take this up to Mir. We're going to actually establish our setup here, which would be good. We're going to actually get, get our component delivered to Mir. The shuttle has certainly been a bit of a design issue for us, but it's definitely the most complicated design that we've tried yet, right? No doubt about that. So we're going to continue to work on perfecting that. It's not there yet. It still needs work, but this is good enough to deliver our payload 
up to Mir, and that is indeed exactly what we're looking to do. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Andy McGar, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.